Vellum, good evening. Thanks very much for your time. I know there's been a great deal of uh, focus on your uh, grandfather's uh, history and uh, of course uh, impact you know in the lives of South Africans but as your the title of your book um, says this is a journey through family betrayals yes Yes, I mean, thanks for, your, thanks for your interest. I mean, I was very careful about writing this book because I know that the name comes with a lot of historical pain for the majority of South Africans. But I also had to be honest about my own journey. And, of course, within my own family, and especially my father, there's a sense in which my challenge to my grandfather's policy, speaking out against it, acknowledging this crime against humanity, that that has been seen as, as treason or as, as betraying and shaming the family. So I had to grapple with that question of what does it mean to be in this family and to love my family, but at the same time to not accept this criticism. Because fundamentally, and that is my fundamental critique, the system of apartheid amounted to the betrayal of families in South Africa, systematically betraying black families in particular. So I do not accept the criticism that I'm a traitor. I actually would say that fundamentally we have systematic uh, violence and family betrayal and we're dealing with the consequences of that. Now, how much uh, of it, uh, in other words, of your decision to put pen to paper and write uh, this uh, uh, very nuanced book had a lot to do with your father specifically and how much of it had to do with all the issues you are of course raising including uh, like what you've uh, just said about um, the system of apartheid in general mm. Yes, I mean, I also have a bit of international experience, Ruyo, in working with people in Israel and Palestine, in Ireland and in Northern Ireland. And I've seen there that in many contexts, people who reach out to the other side, to former enemies, are often accused of being traitors. Um, so this is an international dynamic, but it often also has a very strong family dynamic, that older people, especially in families, struggle to understand how younger people can stand up against the older generation and they accuse them of being disrespectful and disloyal. So I then had to say what does this mean in my own context, in my own family? And I, I think because of the Verwurt name being so prominent, was aware that this journey would also be a public journey, that I cannot, come, I cannot avoid the publicity around this journey and I was prepared to say I also need to be prepared to do this in public and that even though my father in particular is really struggling with this, I have to be honest and open about it so that other young people, other young white South Africans, other people from Afrikaner backgrounds can also be willing to say we cannot become part of this bigger family of South Africans unless we prepare to challenge our own families and the sins of the fathers that are still with us today in South Africa. And there's a lot, uh, I mean, well, <laughs> the book in its entirety actually does exactly what you said, but there are specific parts of uh, the book where what you've just said comes through uh, so succinctly. And one of them is uh, uh, right in the, I think it's the very first page, if I'm not mistaken, of uh, the book. And I just want to read that. I'm hoping that uh, we're going to put it on screen now for um, our viewers and uh, here's what uh, it says there uh, is not very much you can do about it's not that one this is this one is in uh, this is in reference to um, uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu uh, which I'm going to come to a little later on but here's the one I was looking for it says it reads I wondered whether I would be able to do the same with you could I humanize you? Could I try to understand you better without rubbing salt in the wounds of those who suffered and continue to suffer under Dr. Fervood's policies? Would it be possible to include you in the human, human, uh, humanization task, considering the raw connection between my family name and most South Africans' historical dehumanization? Mm. 
Yes. Yes, I mean, that is an extract from a letter which I wrote to my grandfather. Even though he's dead, there was just something in me that felt I need to engage with him. I cannot only talk about him. And of course, within my wider circle of black colleagues and friends, people have been encouraging me to say, you know, speak to your ancestor. We believe, we accept the reality of ancestors. And talk to him, engage with him. Don't, don't avoid it. And so I ended up writing a number of letters in the course of the book to try and speak directly to my grandfather. And that wasn't easy, but it also felt right. And it also felt that at least now I'm looking him in the eyes, I'm trying to be honest and real with him, and at the same time respect his humanity as, as my grandfather. But be very clear about my differences. And in my clarity about those differences, also be humble and not think that I can point fingers at him as being a racist without also acknowledging that as a young person I supported him and his policies. So I cannot point fingers to my parents and my grandparents without also facing my own history and my own racism. Now, let me take you away from your family uh, for a second. Uh, you have in somewhere in the book a 1 July 1988 uh, diary entry, one uh, a Friday night in Lusaka, where you've been meeting with all these people from uh, the ANC, uh, many of whom you've, you had only read or uh, heard about. And uh, you are finding yourself in this situation where you're wondering whether these people have, are actually grappling fully with one or on the one hand uh, who the Afrikaner is and what drives them, uh, what makes them do the things they do and whether in fact the ANC which you are meeting at the time was where the people who were actually responsible for the fight against uh, apartheid at the time and who would in future be the ones, uh, uh, of course, liberating the people of South Africa. How much of those uh, thoughts still go through your mind, of course, so many decades later, and of course with you now being a member of that very ANC? Yes, I mean, I, I knew you would be asking me about, about that. I mean, this is a very difficult issue to handle sensitively because I do not want to be part of this kind of white chorus that finds it very comfortable now to point fingers at the current ANC and especially the ANC under our previous president. So I, I am cautious about those criticisms. I agree with a lot of those concerns, but I still see myself as part of the movement that I joined in the early 90s and that the vision of Chief Albert Lutuli of South Africa as a home for all her sons and daughters, that there's still a lot of work to do, and that people like me should be using our privileges, our unjust privileges, and the things we inherited because of the color of our skin, we should be using this to actually address the inequalities in this country and not only point fingers at corruption and other problems with the ANC. And that's where we're going to leave it for tonight. I wish we could talk more, but unfortunately, we've run out of time. Thank you very much uh, for your time this uh, evening, author of and Henrik Ferrovut's grandson, Willem Ferrovut.